You are watching the Sunday Motivational Video. 15 Things Successful People Don't Do in Their 20s Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello Aluxers, yes we are back with another Sunday video and this time we're looking at the other side of the coin of a video we made a couple of weeks back. Many of you are in this early stage of your career or professional life. Some of you might even be students looking for guidance and answers. When thinking about this period, it's easy to dwell on all of the distractions available, on all of the possibilities, but also on the confusion and anxiety of what awaits you in the near future. Your 20s are your first real engagement with the world. You feel important and ready to conquer it, only to realize in your later years just how naive you are right now. Everybody goes through this inevitably. But why hasn't anyone taken the time to curate a list of honest advice? These are the things that are keeping you from being great later on in your life. Although it might not sound like much, just knowing that these anchors are holding you back might be enough for you to break some of them and improve your life bit by bit. That's why we had to do it. We've got you covered. Here are 15 things successful people don't do in their 20s. And if you're smart, you might reevaluate your current position no matter your age. Number 1. They don't care about impressing their peers. Yeah, this is a strong one. Culture is always shifting and although you feel like you're an independent spirit, most of our consumer habits are decided by people in the higher up floors of marketing corporations. The fact you like a certain brand over another, the fact you're cooler than the rest the moment you show up in one of those off-whites, this is all marketing. The moment you begin playing what the old folks knew as keeping up with the Joneses, you're sacrificing the future for fading moments of irrelevant acknowledgement. Be honest right now. Who cares what they think? You're building this life for yourself, not for them. You have to live with your future. A while back, we shared this quote that we love so much. The kid who bought their own Toyota is more successful than the one flexing in their dad's Range Rover. Always keep this in mind when you feel the pressure to flex, to impress others. Things are nice to have, but right now, you have a life to secure. Number 2. They're not stuck to one place Successful people see themselves as citizens of the world. They embrace the freedom to move, while everybody else thinks the place they were born in is their death sentence. Guess what? Both of these people are correct. There's this magical thing that happens when you realize you can literally pack everything you have in a bag and move to a different place. A different city, a different country, you can escape anytime you want, but you don't really want to because you're scared. Scared of uncertainty and of the hardships that come with the change. What most people fail to remember is that hardships are temporary and the grass is always greener over here for a reason. In 10 years, you'll check whatever Facebook-like social network still exists at the time and look at how your classmates are doing, especially the ones that never left the city you were born in, and you'll feel bad for them. The time is now. You can still move later on in life, but things get a lot more complicated once you have a family to take with you. The logistics of it all turns some people away, despite knowing this might be the right call for them. It's really not as complicated as you think it is. Maybe we'll do a video specifically about this later on. Number 3. They don't let others choose their future for them You're at that age where everybody you know and their neighbor is trying to throw their advice at you because they feel like they know best. We applaud the gesture, but honestly, if the advice was so good, they would probably be a lot happier and more successful than they probably are today. Following their old roadmaps to their vision of success isn't necessary. If you're going to be successful, you'll need to go against the current. Some people will be shocked. Some will think you're crazy. Others might even laugh at you for even trying. People are stupid like that. It comes from internal insecurities. Your success will only prove how incompetent they actually are, and that's a hard pill to swallow. Everybody has to make their own choice. They made theirs, you make yours. This simple choice right here, right now, can open a door to a completely new life, but you've got to be the one making it. And once you do, push at it with everything you've got until it swings wide open and, every and it's everything you wanted it to be. 
Don't ignore what your gut is telling you just because the world is yelling louder. Number 4. They don't think education is enough for a successful life. If you've been around a while, you know our position when it comes to traditional education. Here's the simple truth. Being educated is better than not getting an education at all. Now, if we are to expand on that truth, we can say that some types of education outperform others in the current marketplace. I think we can all agree on both of these statements. When thinking about life, we recommend more of a big picture approach. We like to bet on where things will be and not where they are today. Can you believe some people still, to this day, study Latin? Your education is something you yourself are responsible for, not what the degree says on it. It used to be that without a silly piece of paper, you couldn't get a good job that paid as well. And this is no longer the case. You can literally self-teach yourself particular skills and outlearn the top lawyers and doctors in the country. Because at the end of the day, it's not the paper that gets you those rewards you're looking for, but the effort and value you push into the marketplace. Number 5. They don't let emotions dictate their actions. This is why Romeo and Juliet is such a horrible story. It was a five-day relationship between a 17-year-old and a 13-year-old that resulted in six deaths. Yet, to this day, it's being praised as one of the most romantic stories out there. These two could have both had a happy and fulfilling life if they weren't so damn stupid. You might be thinking, but Alux, I'd never drink poison just to prove a point. But most people do. A lot more figuratively than literally, of course, but we're sure there are a few. Emotions are a great source of energy, of passion, the fuel that drives us to be better and do more. But like any fuel, when not used accordingly, it can result in fire. By the way, the Amazon rainforest has been on fire for weeks now and the incompetent president of Brazil is still trying to hide it and minimize the PR damage without taking action. I know we got sidetracked there, but hey, it's a great example of when emotions, like what do people think of me, are driving the narrative instead of what's the correct course of action. If you want to be successful in life, like actually be a person who's valuable enough to be an inspiration to others, you can't allow emotions like pride Pride, fear, or anger to take charge. This is a very sensitive topic because traditional education has done nothing to address emotional intelligence. You didn't learn anything about how to put order in the chaos of your life, did you? We more or less had to figure it out and piece it together ourselves. And that's how our premium experience, Mind Mastery, came to be. 21 days where you learn a valuable new skill that will stick with you for the rest of your life and finally get you developing your EQ. You can check it out by going to alux.com slash mindmastery and join the hundreds of people who are leveraging it for their own personal growth. Number 6. They don't spend all their income. Oh look, for the first time in your life you have some disposable income. Feels great, right? Now asking the real questions. What are you going to do with it? We know people who, despite earning a lot of money, at the end of each month, they still hit zero. Why? Because they love spending, despite being disappointed with their purchases. They constantly eat out and most of the time complaining about just how bad the food is at certain places. They care about what other people think, so they get a new handbag, the latest iPhone, despite having the most recent one before it. Poor people stay poor because they act like they're rich. Rich people stay rich by acting like they're poor. Everybody has monthly expenses. The difference comes from what you do with that disposable income. If you're in your 20s, invest in your skill set. Get books, buy courses, go to seminars. Unless you're actively flipping sneakers for profit, spending all your disposable income on kicks or stocks is just shameful. Number 7. They're not impatient. This is getting increasingly harder since we're getting more and more used to faster delivery speeds. From internet speed to food delivery, even to getting laid, they've all undergone massive surges in speed. We've become more and more impatient. Everybody needs that hit of endorphins when you post something on social media. If those likes don't start coming in, you feel anxious, your heart rate increases, you start to question if maybe there's something wrong with you. That's the world taking control of you instead of it being the other way around. 
successful people know good things take time, that they'll require consistent effort for prolonged periods, but not the average person. That's why you see everybody going for the easy win, for the get-rich-quick scheme. That's why the most popular searches for money online is how to get rich fast, how to make more money easy, and so on. This is where reality conflicts with your previous superficial experiences, because solid things don't just happen overnight. Number 8. They Don't Hang Out With Losers Most people don't realize the impact your entourage has on you. If you hang out with sick people, it's just a matter of time until you get sick. That's how it works, and it's the same in life. If you hang out with losers, you end up becoming one. We know many of you struggle with this because everybody wants better friends but end up settling for what's available around you. This is because you're not really a person of value yet. Successful people don't want to spend their time with you because until now, you've been surrounded by losers and they associate you with that group. Unless this group of friends you're already in is focused on growth and challenging each other for progress, your best option is to maintain a friendly relationship but be a lone wolf on the side while your personal value increases. In that time, you'll understand their limitations and it will get easier to relate to people who are going through the same thing as you are. We build friendships based based on common goals. When you were young, your goal was to have fun. Now your priorities are changing. Number 9. They're not hoping for a miracle solution to all of their problems. If your financial life plan is to win the lottery or miraculously get a huge inheritance, well, we can't be friends. You always hear these people talk about how they're gonna score it big. These are usually the same type of individuals that dream of themselves in famous gangster movies. They feel like in another life they were the Godfather or Scarface, yet they never realize just how sad the ending for these characters truly was. Luck is great to have, it's a nice bonus, but it ain't a strategy. So many people are wasting away waiting for something or someone to show up in their lives and tell them, you're a wizard, Ari. But the fat guy never comes. So what do they do? They live as Dursleys their entire lives. This isn't fiction, but what you live is a true life story, so you might as well live it in a way that's worth following along. Number 10. They don't underestimate the importance of planning and setting goals. One of the most valuable things a person can do is set proper goals in life. We've been doing this for years and are shocked at how well it's worked out for us. Upon further research, almost every successful person we know sets their yearly goals in a different way than you've been accustomed to. We taught some of our more skeptical friends our own framework for goal setting and they were surprised at how well it all worked. It's not enough to wish for things. Everyone out there has dreams. But setting goals is more about planning on how to make success a reality than simply putting it out into the universe and hoping it somehow materializes. Mediocre people laugh when you tell them about your goals, and that's what keeps them where they are. They always think, why waste my time wishing for something when I know it won't come true? Because that's the only thing they do. They wish for it. The people who are constantly hitting their goals do more than that. It takes discipline, strategy, and proper planning. You have to leverage resources and craft a course of action. When two generals go to war, both of them plan for victory. Otherwise, you wouldn't go to war. The general whose plan is closer to reality is the one who wins. After the success our community has seen with Mind Mastery, we're considering sharing a different approach to goal setting that's allowed us to hit our goals year after year. Another premium experience for those of you who understand the value of leveraging this type of framework for personal gain. We don't have a launch date just yet, as we're still optimizing the curriculum for maximum results. It's gonna be the only thing you'll ever need to master your goals. If you want to be updated when this course goes live, go to alux.com slash goals and join the waiting list. Number 11. They don't obsess about finding their soulmate. Being in a relationship shouldn't define you. You're more than that. Yet many people agonize over being in a relationship or fulfilling their parents' fantasy of getting married by a particular age. Your 20s should be spent exploring, learning about other people, and most importantly, about yourself. 
If you're lucky enough to find a supportive partner that shares your dreams and goals and both of you want to walk this road together, then that's phenomenal. But don't allow the absence of this rare scenario to bring you down. Soulmates are an interesting concept that once again has been marketed to you by Hollywood and culture. This idea that in the 8 billion people alive today you match with a single soul that's been designed for you by a higher power and that you're meant to find it honestly sounds like a load of bull feces. Solid relationships are built over time. On top of that early chemistry, you keep on building by overcoming struggles, by achieving goals together, by being supportive of one another, physically and emotionally. Love comes from feeling safe and strong and important. Love grows between two people over time. Anyone who's been in a relationship or marriage for a long time can tell you how love changes from what you feel in the beginning to something else. It matures. It evolves. Number 12. They don't waste time. When you're in your 20s, it seems like you have an entire life ahead of you, because you literally do. But this feeling translates into laziness, and the feeling that you can keep on postponing things indefinitely for you always have time. People find the weirdest ways to waste time, too. They binge watch bad TV shows they don't even enjoy. They play video games for hours on end beyond the point of entertainment. They do it because there isn't anything better to do, in the same way others simply watch time go by. Successful individuals leverage this period to get ahead. It's in your 20s when the losers get left behind. In the blink of an eye, you find yourself turning 30, and most of your former mates have shared the same fate as you because birds of a feather stick together. Because birds of a feather flock together. But there's that one person who's way ahead of you that you're particularly jealous of. How in the world did that happen? All of a sudden, this person is in a fulfilling relationship, has a successful business, is in top shape and exploring the world, while you're sitting in the exact same bedroom you were in 10 years ago with maybe a different set of sheets on the bed. If used correctly, the period between 25 and 30 can completely shift the direction your life has taken for the better. Don't let this opportunity slide by. Number 13. They're not arrogant. There's nothing worse than an arrogant 20-something-year-old. Why? Because all of the achievements you've had in your life are superficial and fake. Nobody cares about your participation trophies, about being second favorite at prom, about the time you got so wasted it was legendary. Stop it. In the words of Kendrick, be humble, sit down. What they're actually trying to portray is confidence, but because of the lack of EQ, it comes off badly in the shape of arrogance. That's why you always hear them bragging and humble bragging. By this point, you didn't have enough time to prove your skill set, so your best bet is to put your head down and focus on getting things done. There's nothing that builds more trust than saying, I don't have sufficient information to give an educated answer, but I'll look into it and get back to you. It's 100 times better than making things up, because that's what used to work in high school. Being humble attracts a lifetime of respect, while arrogance disqualifies you completely from the first time you fail. Number 14. They don't think the world revolves around them. Probably the strongest realization you could have in this period of your life is that you're worthless until you become valuable. We're not sorry for the blunt truth, but we don't want to sugarcoat it just to make you feel better. Alux isn't a safe space with trigger warnings. This realization hits super hard. That's why so many of us struggle with negative feelings. If you're lucky, you are brought up by loving parents who tell you how special you are, how beautiful or handsome you are, and all your life up to this point, you've experienced it centered around who you are as a person. There's nothing more brutal than the realization that if you went away today, a few people would feel sad, but everyone else would go about their day. Once this is a part of you, you cannot go back. You'll feel a fire burning inside you, the desire to leave a mark, to create something worth noticing. That's when you become special. That's when you can finally begin to grow. Number 15. They don't give up when things get hard. Throughout your life, you'll come face to face with different challenges. These are meant to help you figure out what kind of person you are, not in a negative way, just an objective one. 
You probably know some folks that always try something different, but the moment things get difficult, they throw in the towel. They do this with businesses, with relationships, with personal goals. They're quitters. Real recognizes real. Successful people have this obsession with making it, that unless you have it within you, it's hard to explain. It's a feeling of, I'd rather give it everything I've got than quit. That's why success is so rare, because it goes against the basic instinct of survival. I'd rather be safe than push myself to a point where I don't know what happens. Not everyone who's pushing makes it to the other side, but those who do get to enjoy what everyone else only dreams of. Just pay attention to how people are behaving, and you will see these traits in them. We're curious to know which of these are holding back your inner circle. We have a large enough audience so that your answer can shine some light on this epidemic of mediocrity. Leave your answer in the comments, and maybe other people will wake up once they identify themselves with it. Also, as a thank you for watching this already long video until the very end, we have a special bonus piece of info. Number 16. Don't be envious, be inspired. We constantly feel like life is a competition, but everyone is running their own race. You're not competing against each other, you're competing with poverty and mediocrity. If you see someone doing really well for themselves, stop with the hate and face yourself in the mirror. If they were able to do it, then if you work hard, you might do the same. Don't look up to false idols, to those who got lucky, to those who were born with success. Instead, look to those who grind it themselves, who despite all odds, made it. These are your heroes. These are the people you should look up to. Just because someone got their win doesn't mean you can't get yours. Get it through your head. Success isn't a limited amount. Success is a measurement of how much of your potential you achieve. Take a moment to sit on that until you're confident and fully understand it. Then go to the comments and write the word success as proof you're a true Aluxer and got some extra value everyone else missed because they didn't watch until the end of the video. You should feel proud for choosing to invest in yourself today. We want to congratulate you on that choice, and we can't wait to hear how this video has shifted your future. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos for you to watch next. As always, the conversation continues on social media. Thanks again, and we can't wait to have you back tomorrow.